it's cool to be liked but being respected is so much more important in a corporate setting. The bottom line is, you're not gonna always be able to be nice. Sometimes you're gonna have to get down in the mud and roll with the pigs, baby. Turn left on. If you got it, it ain't a question. Oh, it ain't no more for guessing. No more than emotionally invested. All right, guys, we have a bombshell sponsor. I would like to thank Lillian White for sponsoring today's video. So, guys, Lillian White is a elegant, simple, but yet sophisticated jewelry company that was developed in 2017. And when they reached out to me, I was extremely excited. So the first piece that I wanna show you guys are these gorgeous, dainty earrings. I absolutely love these. Now the price point of these earrings are under $20. And I thought these were so simple, so pretty. I thought that these earrings would be absolutely gorgeous with this beautiful, stunning cuff. So this is a bracelet, but it does kind of fit like a cuff. It's timeless, it is sophisticated, and it is elegant. I was able to adjust it by just doing a simple squeeze. So guys, look at this beautiful bracelet. It is adjustable, so what you would do is put the bracelet on and just adjust it by sliding this piece all the way down. You can adjust it tighter as you need it or wider. So I love that as well. I selected these gorgeous, super dainty, super feminine little earrings. These are the earrings. I love them. Look at how sophisticated that is. I'm gonna be honest, I would probably wear it stacked. Guys, it is graduation season. It is wedding season. This would be gorgeous for a bridal party. So if any of you gorgeous ladies are getting married, these gifts would be under $20. I think Lily and White did just a beautiful job, a phenomenal job at creating beautiful pieces that are timeless, elegant, and sophisticated. I am actually going to link the pieces that I am wearing down in the description box. Once again, I would like to thank Lillian White for sponsoring today's video. We have a new name. We are renaming the channel to Rotel Chanel. I would like to thank Malik on Instagram for giving me my new name. <laughs> Y'all, Malik is a very funny young man. He slid in my DMs at three o'clock in the morning. And uh, he said, hey, Rotel Chanel. And I looked at his page. I did think that he was like a little girl. I responded back and I was like, hey, pretty girl. I'm not sure if this message is for me, but if it is, I'm Rochelle Chanel. Uh, please let me know if there's anything that I can help you with. So when he responded back, he was like, I'm a boy. I was just playing when I called you Rotel. So I thought that was so cute. So I did apologize for misgendering him. He said, he said that he loved my channel. And so he messaged me back and he was like, that's just my little name for you. And I thought that was so cute. So, hey, Malik. Girl, y'all, we about to go to, we about to go to Ross. Y'all, we going, I'm letting y'all know right now. We probably going to be going to Ross a lot in, in these vlogs. But, y'all, I took my nails off, guys, because I get tired of my nails lifting. You know what I'm saying? Like, after about two or three weeks, they start lifting um, or maybe sometimes after two weeks and it's not, it's not my nail tech. It is because I do so many freaking wig reviews and I wear wigs every day almost. And I'm constantly pulling the nails down and when you're pulling them down, they lift like at the cu cuticle. So we finna go get us some fake nails. Can we talk about girl y'all, how YouTube ain't want, ain't want me to, uh, <laughs> put, put the, put that, um, video of me up with my swimsuit on girl i don't understand girl youtube they will literally let me cuss and do and say will say whatever i want but baby one thing youtube do not be wanting to do is let me wear a swimsuit girl they literally y'all it took my video oh wait a minute hold on i think it's my turn Girl, y'all, not them not having no uh frozen coke. It took three hours. Uh-uh, I'm confusion. Wait a minute, girl. Nah. Uh-uh. You said what is that? It's the frozen coke. Well, you told me y'all didn't have it. it. Right 
Okay. Okay, I need the large one though, cause I had ordered a. Oh, you, it was a large one. Yeah. Uh, uh girl, y'all, look at how they trying to do me. They trying to boycott. They trying to stop me from having a frozen. Car. Now I did say I was gonna cut back, but I ain't say I was gonna stop completely. But anyway, girl, yeah. So they took forever to do the check on the video, girl. I don't know, like I don't understand that, and it just seemed like the videos where I, you know where I'm showing a little bit more skin and stuff like that those are thank you boo can I have some extra napkins that frozen coke hey uh-uh wait a minute hold on y'all why the coke is wasting all on me I'm fucking dead uh-uh okay I'm gonna see you look at that give me some more napkins boo you trying to make it all fancy now it's going all over the place okay I'm gonna see you next time bye Girl, y'all, not the damn coke going everywhere. I'm fucking dead, girl. <laughs> y'all. Girl, y'all, wait a minute. Girl. He didn't did that whole damn speech talking about they ain't had no frozen coke. Okay. Oh, Lord. I have to put some hand sanitizer on. Yes. Oh, this vlog is starting off a freaking mess, girl. It never fails. Can I just have a vlog that just start off normal? But anyway, I just had to tell y'all about YouTube and not letting them uh want me to wear it. They don't want the head bum shell to be wearing nothing sexy. Baby, they said you can have the spiciest mouth on the YouTube. You can have a slickest mouth on the YouTube, but we don't want you showing them thick old, them thick thighs and them, and them boobs, baby. Let me show y'all what I got. So, I bought these cereal containers because I needed to uh, get organized. I bought a little nail kit because I don't have one and I needed this. This will be good for travel. I bought these little breast um, things so when I wear, you know, certain tops, I don't have to worry about a bra. Of course, some more fingernail files because you cannot, every girl needs a set of fingernail files. I bought these cute nails, y'all. I got these and they were $4. So they're just white with a little stone on them, girl. Something real simple. You guys know I like my nails to be very, very simple. So yeah, they're so cute. I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see those, but that's fine. When I put them on, let me see, girl. Let me see how they just gonna look. Girl, they look like they too. Okay, oh, those look cute, y'all, look. So. Girl, they look like they're gonna be real cute. Um, I needed a black bodysuit. Guys, I had one of these uh before the fire. Of course, it was lost in the fire, but this is so sexy. It's a thong bodysuit, and it has the uh draped middle, so sexy with a really low back, girl. Baby, that's a very sexy bodysuit. I bought some these little cups and I know these might be for kids but that's fine girl these are just for when I go to the pool and I want to make a drink you guys know I don't really drink that much so these will be perfect just to go to the pool and that's pretty much it but anyway girls I'm about to unwind a little bit I need some I need some energy but I really need to do some work but let me unwind a little bit and uh, I'll call y'all back
daughter Drake and mama D and Lisa D on Higa Street. High both from bars on the screen, up to the TV screen, don't ask me. But never change the channel, Gucci flannel, Gucci size, Gucci sandals, Gucci teddy bears and pandas. Not fake propaganda, about to blow out the candle. My little hoe, out of Atlanta, got a hoe, out of Atlanta, with a hoe, out of Atlanta, she a hoe, out of Atlanta, we get it. That's the same in East City. My bitch is better than Pete. Hey y'all, so I know that I have been missing and it's been a periodically long time, but girl, y'all, the last time I picked up the camera was um, when I worked out, y'all, that workout took me out. I'm going to turn this light off, y'all. It's going to get dark, but that's okay. Just bear with me. So yeah, girl, I got to pick, I got to get back on the old horse because y'all, that workout, it really did take me out. It really did. But the good news is, you know, once I get back into the, the swing of things in terms of working out, I should see results relatively fast. I don't like have a lot of body fat or anything like that. So yeah, girl. But um, I just wanted to address this real quick. Let's talk about Sukiana and OK Cyrus. Well, number one, it's not OK Cyrus, OK? Sukiana, she's more or less a personality. She has a very sexual personality. She talks very sexual and salacious and seductive. She has an OnlyFans. So again, she is a very uh, sexual woman. But anyway, so she went to uh i guess some type of podcast situation this young guy there okay cyrus yk whatever his name is he was there and he just like got up and he started massaging her shoulders then he attempted to kiss her in her mouth and she was just like so stunned and you know her mouth was still open or whatever and he just tried to plant one on her. You could see she she was trying to maneuver away. So anyway, later on she tweeted that she felt violated. She was just so hurt or whatever because it is it is an online persona. That's probably truly not who she is or whatever. So um, ultimately he did apologize publicly and privately. She did accept his apology. But I just want to say this. It was a lot of women in the comment section and they were talking about how she, uh, well, you know, she asked for it. Look at all the kind of stuff she talks about. It does not matter what type of persona she has, the types of conversations that she has, her image or whatever. That does not give a man permission to assault you. You know what I'm saying? In a sexual way. It does not give a man permission to do that. If you guys, you know, just think about even going out. Guys, I don't know if you watched uh, Vlogtober, but I had went out to a poetry reading. And I was dressed very, you know, classy. You guys know that I dress classy and I also dress very sexy. I went out to a poetry reading, despite the fact that I was dressed the way that I was, very sophisticated, sexy, and put together, men still felt the need to touch me. Men sometimes just feel entitled to women, and unfortunately, we are operating or we're in a different day and age. But was what was more disappointing than all of that are the women who kind of had the, she deserved it, you know, and it just made me realize that, you know, some, not all women, but some women or you know they just social they're socialized to fight the same way or to have the same thought process sometimes as men as a woman when you look at women whether they're dressed nice or not it don't matter it don't matter you could be dressed in a damn dress like uh you could be dressed like a mormon you know what I'm saying? You could be covered from head to toe. Men will still, some men will still feel entitled to touch you. Some people still feel that it's an invite to have either, you know, uh, I'm, I'm going to be the only one touching you or I'm going to be many of the ones touching you. It does not matter. Just thought that that was just a very unfortunate and interesting take on some of the comments that shut up, bitch, that was put in the comment section. Sorry, y'all. But anyway, um, so I'm on my way to H-E-B, girl, y'all. I literally slept the day away because I was just that exhausted. So we're gonna go to H-E-B. I wanna get some vegetables. So we're gonna delve into getting like some um, celery, spinach. You know, those are other vegetables that I love because I wanna incorporate some different stuff in my diet. But anyway, let's run in the store real quick so we can head back to the house. All right, y'all, I am obviously home, but listen. So girlies, to all of my girlies <laughs> that's like me, it don't matter like what you put your temperature on in your house, you always cold no matter what. This is what y'all need to do. Get you a heating pad, sis. 
y'all i could put the air like on 75 but y'all it's always so cold in here so girl i've been sleeping with my heating pad and girl y'all this has been like <laughs> the best sleep ever i'm telling you like sometimes i'll just sleep with it like you know just lay on it or whatever and then other times i'll just sleep with it like on my stomach girl when I tell you I've been sleeping so good and I've been like so warm at night because it's very, very, very difficult for me to get warm. My hands are always freezing. My feet are always freezing. You know, um, I was uh, I was I did go through a phase where I would wake up at night and my feet would be like really, really, really hot. Well, that's because I needed to, uh, you know, add a few more things into my diet. I don't need no ice, baby. I could just, look, girl, I could just dip my feet in a glass and that's all the ice you need because my feet and my hands are always freezing. Like now my hands are so cold. But anyway, so get you, get you a heating pad, girl. I think I paid 12 or $13 for this thing at, uh... At, on amazon and it's like it's not nothing fancy girl it just has like the little setting so it's basically low medium high i keep mine on high and yeah girl so anyway y'all um i guess i'm about to watch something on tv hopefully tomorrow i'll be you know in more of a chatty mood guys i have not felt like talking these last couple of days and you guys I've explained that to you that I do go through those phases where I don't want to talk I just like to be quiet um I'm not depressed I'm not sad about anything it is just a part of my personality um and so uh yeah that's that I just go through those phases from time to time or lately more often than not um and then also unfortunately it's like I think I might have told y'all this already but this vlog is not going to be out until Monday because um, I wanted to release something before Monday. But um, I have a sponsorship that needs to go into Monday's vlog. So you guys will get this on Monday. But anyway, I'm going to pick you guys uh, back up. I'm going to call y'all back in the morning. Hey, y'all. So girls, we are about to do the battle of the curl wands. But first, let me get some chapstick. Hold on. All right, girl, I am back. We're going to do, so this one, I'm going to make sure that I link these because someone uh, will ask me to link these every video, so I'll link them. So we have curl one number one, guys. This is a curl one that comes with uh, quite a few attachments. So I'll link this, and then we have this one. Um, so I purchased these two at a different time. So first, girl, let's try to get some of these. Let's try to get some of this volume under control. We're gonna use the one with the attachment first. So we're gonna use this one first. Guys, this thing is super freaking hot. Y'all make sure you guys use your, um, it comes with like a, a glove, but if you don't use the glove, make sure when you do your curls, it's, try to make sure that your hand is constantly like away from the one. Ooh, so pretty. So y'all, I wanted to have like a, a pretty girl day to day, but I can't make no promises, girl. I cannot make no promises because baby, once we get in the car, ain't no telling, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no telling what's gonna happen, but I want to go to the museum for, museum for black girls. The museum for black girls, it does, oh, uh-uh, see? See, girl, put your hand, put your hand far away, girl, because it almost got me. But anyway, um, the Museum for Black Girls closes at 7, so I'm going to see if I can get us some tickets. If your curls get stuck on the one, girl, don't be trying to put your hand on there because you will be look, your hands will be looking like beef jerky. Sis, just take your comb and just pull the curl like that. And then y'all, after this, we're gonna do our makeup and get pretty. Y'all, I have something so pretty to wear. It's like pretty and really like sexy, kind of feminine. You know what I'm saying? Okay, y'all, this is the one that um, I bought. And this one is from Wavy Talk, okay? Now, 
This one will kind of burn you, but it won't be that bad. You know what I'm saying? It, it's not going to be as detrimental. So even if your hand touches it a little bit, it's, oh, uh-uh. Girl, not that the thing ain't on. Let me tell y'all something else about this wavy top one. This one does have a timer and it does cut off after a while. And so we got to sit here and wait for it to reheat. So I'm going to be honest, that is a little bit annoying. I hate that. It really shouldn't take that long for the other one to heat up. Oh, y'all, them curls came out good. I love it. A little bit. You. Yeah. Yes, girl. I ain't gonna lie, y'all. It is kind of giving Shanae a little bit. Now, I can honestly say this one does curl. It, it kind of forms the curls a lot faster. Girl, they out there having fun at the pool, baby. They had New Orleans night on Thursday. So all you heard was bounce music out there. I like both sides, I'll be honest. So yes, girly, hold on, let me look in this mirror over here. I don't know why, I'm gonna be honest. This side is kind of giving Shanae a little bit, but that's okay. We're pretty much done with the curls. I'm trying to just fix the lace. Y'all, till my girlies at wear wigs. Girl, listen. Baby, don't be letting. Hold on, girl. My shoe stuck under this chair. <laughs> Y'all, the wig must know I'm about to start talking. I'm about to start talking my shit. Girl, don't let y'all wig play, y'all. Because, girl, I don't know. Like, my wig be having some little bald spots in it. You know what I'm saying? And so, I'm trying to. Filling in, girl. If you notice that your lace is, you know, getting a little ball headed or whatever, don't let your lace play with you, baby. Get that, get that eyeshadow. Get you some eyeshadow and reinforce it. You know what I'm saying? Filling them holes or whatever. But now look, I be catfishing my pictures, but let me tell you something. The hardest thing to catfish is a balding lace. You know what I'm saying? When you, when after you edit your pictures and stuff, and they be looking all good, and baby, that lace be bald headed, girl. What my all is? Y'all, I think I told y'all this before. Y'all, I love looking pretty. That's like, <laughs> that's one of my favorite things to do. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't always like ultra, you know, like a lady. Cause I be cussing. Like I be cussing and stuff, but that's okay. You know, it's it's nothing wrong with cussing sometimes, girl. It's, it's not a big deal. If you came to my channel because you want to like, see a lady that acts ladylike and that's prim and proper and you know always does the right thing this ain't the channel for you sis because i ain't always doing the right thing i ain't gonna always be prim and proper okay now let's get into this makeup guys i always start doing my makeup with the hangover three in one guys this is to prime set and refresh your face this is by Too Faced, and i got this from the ccs guys everything that i'm using today is going to be from the ccs because oh it smells so good like kenday hey i get all my makeup from there because we love a discount i am also going to be using my Too Faced uh foundation born i'm sorry born this way foundation it's a 24-hour foundation and this is in warm sand and i like to work in you know like fast strokes um because the primer dries kind of it does draw a little bit fast, but that's okay. We're just gonna do that one layer. What I like to do now is take a little bit of my concealer, guys. This is Cookie Concealer. Again, this is Born This Way. And then I like to take my Beauty Blender and I just like to kind of go like, you know, just in quick little strokes from side to side. I'll do a little bit more. Not too much though. The next thing I like to do is my brows, but because I'm super oily, I like to go in with just like a powder that's the same color as me. So today we're just gonna use this pretty fresh ColourPop in the number 10. Guys, I purchased this from, uh, where did I get this from? Ulta. And this has been a really, a really good powder. So we just go across the eyebrows like that. And that's just going to kind of get all of the oil under control. Let me do a little bit more right here. As I go in with my e.l.f. pencil, guys, these pencils are only $2. I go in with the dark brown. And then I just go in with strokes like this. I don't try to like 
brush my brows. I know some people brush their brows going up, but my eye, my brows are very sparse. So I just like to go and brush the brows like that. I just lightly go in like that. Now I like my brows very thin at the front and I like them to get gradually darker at the end. So I apply just a little bit more pressure towards the end. Wow, oh, this look crazy. I am now gonna go in with a very thin foundation brush just to kind of balance everything out. I'm gonna go under my brow with the latte. This is the lighter concealer that I picked up last week, or maybe I think I picked this up in the last vlog. Uh, let's see, so we're just gonna go in and move that product around. You're gonna get as close to the edge of your brow as possible. Okay, baby, baby, it's looking, it ain't looking real good, but just bear with me. Now on the top of your brows, we're gonna go in with a darker concealer, which is Cookie. Don't worry girls, it's gonna balance out, okay? Just, just hang in there with me. You're just gonna go to the top and balance everything out. This is where we get our shape. So now, I'm just gonna take a fluffy uh, eyeshadow brush and we're just gonna blend everything in, girl. So now, what we're gonna do on the eyes, we're gonna go in with a different brush and we're just going to soften the edges up because we are gonna be going in with a bronzer. All right, what you wanna do next is go in with a super fluffy actual eyeshadow brush. Just gonna go in with my Coco Naughty by Fenty. This is my absolute favorite bronzer. I'm not gonna even much lie to you, baby. Okay, so this is the part where we're gonna do the concealer. So guys, I'm gonna start with Latte. I did purchase Latte last weekend, like I said, um, because I was looking for a lighter concealer. We just gonna start right here with the Latte. I do like this color though, but it is a little bit yellow, but that's okay. We're gonna do, we're gonna do Cookie a little bit further out. We're gonna go in with our fluffy powder brush or fluffy eyeshadow brush. One of you girlies left me a message telling me this is a game changer. Girl, tell me about it. Y'all, start doing y'all under eyes, blending it in with a fluffy eyeshadow brush. Baby, it do change the game, girl. For me, I like my under eye to just look, look really, really bright and pretty. It just gives you that really soft baby look. If you got girlies are like me <laughs> and you are either always laughing or smiling, let me show you how to soften your laugh line up. You're just gonna go in with like, let me see, three or four dots of concealer here and then one, two, three, four here. Um, and you're gonna kind of let that sit and then we're just gonna blend it out. That's just a way to soften up your laugh, laugh lines. And then still to give you that really soft, like, like I said, baby look. So now to further warm up the forehead, we're gonna go in with a little bit more of our Fenty. And this also gonna, girl, this also gonna kind of, you know, get that lace to, you know, looking, looking good too. <laughs> Guys, I am using this NARS foundation on my lower lid. I'm gonna lightly tap this foundation on our lid. So you just gonna lightly tap it and just build up. You don't wanna go in all aggressive, you know what I'm saying? And then you're gonna do this side and you're gonna come back, you know what I'm saying? From side to side. And side to side. Never let whole ass niggas ride. Ay, ay. Love it. Okay, so now, girly, it is time for us to go ahead on and blend our foundation out right here. We're gonna use this highlighter. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take the little dropper and I'm literally gonna just go in my line, uh, in my waterline just with little dots. We're gonna line our upper lid with a black liquid eyeliner. Oh, 
Okay, so we're gonna let that dry. Guys, I like to do my blush with either a beauty blender or just a big, big, big fluffy brush. So we're gonna use this brown powder brush and then I'm just gonna go in big circles like this. I'm gonna go on top of it with, um, with the foundation brush. Don't forget to add your pressed powder. I'm just doing Laura Mercier, the translucent powder, and we're just gonna add it under our eyes. So now we're gonna go right here where we softened up our smile lines. And we're gonna do a little bit of powder here. See, I like to add a little bit of powder to under my nose my butt nose girl <laughs> and then just soften it up making it like a little bit softer white heel softer y'all know i'm from texas so some stuff i gonna say is gonna you know sound funny softer softer it's softer but if you from the south it's softer it's softer if you from the south <laughs> So now we're gonna go in with a little bit of highlighter, just a little bit. I'm gonna put some right here on my little button nose. <laughs> and some right here, just a little bit, not too much. We're gonna try to make up our top lip a little bit fuller. So we're gonna go in with some extreme lip injection by Too Faced. It burn too, girl. I ain't gonna even much lie to you, baby. Baby, this stuff be burning, girl. You wanna focus on your cupid's bar, the highest points of your lip. And voila, magic. Voila, magic. Hey, I feel so pretty. Let me spray my neck, girl. My neck. My bike. We are about to put on our pasties, girls. Y'all got to get some of these. Guys, I got these at Ross. I purchased them in a size large slash slash extra large. And girl, I found out that you can put these on in just like more ways than one. So really, they're supposed to be put on like this. So you put them on your boob and then you put this piece of tape like to lift them. But... Girl, I found out if you put it this way, then it actually creates, let me try to show y'all without YouTube trying to come over here and shut us down. So girls, if you put this thing on from, on this part of your boob, this way and pull it, it gives you, let me bring this down so you can see what I'm talking about. There we go. If you put it on this way, it's gonna give you more space between here and here. Okay, so it's going to give you the illusion that your waistline is actually smaller than it is. And for the outfit we're wearing, we're going to put these on this way. All right, girl. Oh, yeah, I hope this camera is not shaking. So, y'all, this is the final look, guys. I purchased this outfit from ASOS for $17. It was a dress at first, and then I separated the two pieces. But anyway, so this is the look. It's like a midi dress i hope y'all can see that guys also i have on a pair of leggings under here these are like super super thin leggings um because the dress is kind of sheer and then also you know we want to have things that's gonna smooth us out you know make us just look super super snatched and then oh let me tell y'all this real quick under leggings i do have on like one of those uh, really thick Victoria's Secret uh, thongs that I showed you guys. So this that's what's giving us our extra extra snatch. So this is it in the back And then of course our pasties on in the front Well, hello everybody I am corporate Karen and I'm here with a message. All right girls. So today's corporate Karen message is about Gaining respect is sometimes better than being In liked. A mile. It's cool to be liked, but being respected is so much more important in a corporate setting. Guys, you're not gonna always be able to go to work and play nice because sometimes when you play nice, people look at that as a weakness. 
and we are a lot of things but we are not uh, we're not weak bottom line is you not gonna always be able to be nice you know what i'm saying shit sometimes you gonna have to get down in the mud and roll with the pigs baby turn left onto the west park tollway ramp <laughs> Y'all, I was trying to be pretty when I did this segment, but it's the truth. So I just feel like I've had a situation at work. Let me tell you real quick. So when I was a engineering coordinator at the structural engineering firm, um, I had to move my desk one time. So I was packing my stuff up, putting it on the cart or whatever, getting ready to move my desk. It was a lady at work and she was like, oh my God, you would make a great flight attendant. I didn't say anything, but I just made a mental note. Um, the next time she made an inappropriate comment to me, it was in regards to me coming. It was in regards to me coming to her house and cleaning up. And it is because I had to tidy up a conference room because I was getting ready to have what's called a lunch and learn which is where I bring other clients in and those clients teach my engineers different strategies or whatever it is to improve the current skill set that they have well because I was initially the face of uh, the structural engineering firm I was the one who would have to go downstairs and escort those guys up. Well, if I have to escort you up to the if I have to escort you up to the to the uh, conference room, if that mug is nasty and it's dirty, you're gonna be looking at me some type of way. And I'm not, and I, you know, I'm big on representation, so I'm like, fuck that. I don't give a damn if the cleaning crew ain't here. Let me get in here and make sure this shit is on point, cause I don't want my clients feeling. Uh, you know, I didn't want the incoming the the company the incoming clients feeling any kind of way of coming into a you know not a clean welcoming environment long story short i'm in there cleaning up girl this bitch gonna come in there and talking about some uh oh my god you could come like asking me how much i would charge to come to the house and clean up so i didn't say anything but i did get that hold of death stare y'all know what the death stare is so after that i went and i talked to my manager which was the director of engineering i'm sorry the vice president of engineering i asked him you know like how would he handle the situation and long story short he told me to call that hoe into a meeting and read them raggedy ass rebox off her feet and that's exactly what i did but what he also told me was that do not let up on her meaning be diplomatic but don't let up on her meaning like a lot of times when you call somebody out for the behaviors that they know is inappropriate what they try to do is laugh and try to get you you know in a relaxed position and so he basically coached me he was like don't let her off the hook don't let her do that so when I confronted her and I told her like you've made some inappropriate statements I don't know what your problem is but let me tell you who I am so I gave that whole uh, a synopsis thesis and a motherfucking symposium on who I was you know because obviously you think I'm some some little chick around here you think I, I don't know I you know you you obviously don't know who I am so let me school you so then she tried to like she did exactly what my manager said she was gonna do she tried to like back out like <laughs> oh my god I was just joking and when she started doing all that dumb ass laughing and shit I didn't do anything I just gave her this look so you know sometimes you have to do that ladies and don't be afraid like if you do have a situation like I had at work where I did have someone saying demeaning things to me very disrespectful things things that were uh, inappropriate um, you know go to your manager if you have a good relationship with your manager and, and, and seek you know consult with your manager and seek advice or whatever and then if, if you don't have a good relationship well hopefully you do but if you don't you know you may have to get HR involved and you may have to get a mediator involved but what you you know more importantly you're gonna have to let that whole let whoever know um, that you're not here to be played with you know sometimes in a workspace we have girls who've been mean girls their whole life and unfortunately mean girls grow up to be mean queens and they still do mean shit and they still use the same tactics that they've used as kids and fat guys women are socialized to still fight the way that they fought in middle school and high school and in elementary think about how girls fought in elementary what they wouldn't necessarily physically attack you but what they would do is try to ruin your reputation saying some fucked up shit about you that they know good and damn well is not true and hope 
hopes that it would either get back to you so you would know and then too it created what's called a herd mentality and this goes back to what Tate Payton and I was talking about sometimes and especially with women when women do not like you they will participate in the abuse of you they will participate even when they know this shit is not true they know you not a whore they know you not a liar they know all of these things about you are not true but because they don't fucking like you they will participate in the abuse of you and they will participate in the slander of your name as well as your re reputation so anyway so anyway um i just wanted to say that and uh getting back on track guys sometimes you will at work have to go to the nucleus of the mean girls this bitch was the nucleus she was the nucleus of the mean girls meaning she led the mean girl crew so when I went to her and I had, you know, I said what I had to say, I didn't have any more issues with her or whatever. And so this message uh, has so many different, you know, you can take, it has so many different takeaways. Guys, always be diplomatic at work. Make sure you're always diplomatic on your emails because those emails can come back and bite you. More importantly, if you have someone that's, uh, that's bullying you and you cannot file a grievance with your manager, make sure you file a grievance with, uh, you can file a grievance with HR and you can say that it's creating a hostile work environment. It's giving you anxiety and it's making it very difficult for you to perform your job. But anyway, I am Corporate Karen and this has been a public service announcement. All right, girls, when we leave here, we're gonna go get something to eat. I am starving, but I just wanted to have this experience with you guys um you know i think it's appropriate it's more than appropriate because it is the weekend of juneteenth guys you'll be getting this vlog on juneteenth and so hopefully you will enjoy it if you have the day off if not make sure y'all listen to this on your lunch break or just you know at your desk but anyway girls um we should be pulling up to the museum in about six minutes for black girls I'm minding my business and I meet Dwayne Caliente he is a up-and-coming makeup artist here in the Houston area we're gonna set something up where he does my makeup but I'm gonna let him introduce himself so how y'all doing my name is Dwayne Caliente you can find me on Instagram at Dwayne Caliente but like she said you know up-and-coming makeup artists I've been in the game for about five years now I work with you know a couple networks I've you know got a couple you know celebrity clients under my belt but yeah, we gon' you know we gon' set some things up and we gon' you know show y'all how I do. Baby, he about to bring that heat. <laughs> okay, y'all, I'm gonna make sure that I link his uh, Instagram page below. Girls, my girl, he's in Houston, guys. Please go check him out because he is the truth. I've already checked his page out. His makeup is beautiful. I'm also gonna make sure that I put his name across the screen. But I'm gonna call y'all back. All right, y'all, girl, you will not believe what happened. So. Um, when I was in the Museum for Black Girls, guys, the camera actually broke. So the back screen uh, kind of detached from the camera. So we are in Best Buy, so I'm probably going to have to 
get another camera like as soon as possible because what's happening is I can't I cannot see myself on the camera so I'm probably gonna have to get that one fixed but right now I, I need my cameras all right y'all so this is what we're gonna have to do we're gonna order a camera from Amazon um, unfortunately they do not sell the white Sony ZV-1 but the good news is um, we're gonna have to just tape the uh, the view the viewfinder because the view I mean the um girl I can't even freaking talk I'm so flustered girl um, I guess it's, it's the it's the viewfinder girl whatever the thing is where you can see yourself so we're gonna take that and we're gonna leave it open until the new camera comes in the mail and that should be here on Tuesday uh, so that's just that's gonna be our workaround for right now hey Good luck. Thank you. All right, y'all. So, girl, y'all, it's crooked, but it's working. So, um, we're about to, I guess we're just going to go ahead on with our day. You know, the show must go on, guys. We're going to go and get something to eat, and then we're going to head home after that. Oh, listen, as soon as I picked up the darn camera to tell you guys that we just made 14,000 bombshells, the darn camera then broke, girl. Oh, my God. This has been... A crazy day, but that's okay. The show must go on, girl. We about to go pull up on Ninfas. All right, y'all. So we are just leaving Ninfas. So, girls, if if any of you want to visit Houston, this is a really nice area. I think this is like the Galleria area, maybe Uptown Park area, but they have so yeah, Uptown. This is Uptown Houston, not too far from the Galleria. So they have a lot of nice restaurants. They have Prey. All right, yeah. So I don't know if y'all can see up there, girls, but that's Prey. And then behind me is True Food Kitchen. So you guys see uh, True Food Kitchen. So yeah, this is a really nice area now. I don't uh, patronize uh, Prey or True Food Kitchen here because they don't have the best reviews but Nifa's the service was a one the food was good it was a little bit spicy y'all know I don't eat that much so I had like maybe two maybe like two bites of my food and that was it so anyway girls um we might hi <laughs> hello how you doing beautiful I'm doing good <laughs> we're good Nifa's thank you so y'all, um, I'm probably gonna make us a drink when I get home, but I'm not, don't hold me to that now because I didn't have anything to drink here at the restaurant. But anyway, girl, baby, I don't know why they got the hazard lights on on my car, but let me get my car from um, the valet thing and I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, girls, obviously I am home and I'm about to take a shower, but before I take my shower, I wanted to, I probably should take this off, huh? <laughs> so I wanted to show you guys uh, the products that I use to help me with hyperpigmentation. I don't know why, but in the summertime, as a woman of color, my hyperpigmentation tends to get a little bit more intense. So guys, when I shave, I do religiously now shave with this Tropicana Glow. This is a moisturizing shaving oil. And it just keeps my underarms and everywhere else that I shave very moisturized. Um, and so um, I use that. And it also stops the hair from my underarms from itching when the hair grows back. After I shave under my arms, I use the, let's see here, what is this? Tree Hut. I use the Tree Hut Shea Butter Scrub. I was using the Skin Potion, guys, the Skin Potion. Kama Sutra scrub is the best one but girl I ran out and I'm so sad about it girl but this is really good also but it's not as good as the skin potion but uh, again I shave under my arms with the oil and then I use the scrub um, and this just exfoliates under my arms and keeps uh, the ingrown hairs away so after I do all of that I spray under my arms. This is a actual hand sanitizer. I love this, but they stopped making it. This was made by Sol de Janeiro. It smells amazing. But once I run out of this, guys, I'm going to use alcohol. So I basically take this and I spray it under my arms. Yes, it does sting a little bit, but it just helps, you know, soothe. To me, I feel like even though it stings, it soothes my skin a little bit from the actual shaving. And then after I do that... 
I go under my arms with this Neutrogena Body Oil. Guys, not only do I use the Neutrogena Body Oil under my arms, I use it on my inner thighs to keep everything like my like the same color like my inner thigh area everything is like the same color uh as my entire body my inner thighs used to be really really dark when i was heavier because it was a lot of friction and stuff and so what i would do to try to you know protect my inner thighs is make sure that i always wore leggings or some type of shapewear under my clothes i don't have that issue anymore because i do use a lot of moisture in my inner thigh area and then too uh, my inner thighs, because I did have a thigh lift, they don't rub as much. So it's not as much friction when I walk. And then lastly, the last product that I use, and this is just to avoid hyperpigmentation, I use a Neutrogena um, Essentially Enriched. And this is for the, it's Deep Nourishing Serum. It has Deep nourish, Nourishing Serum in it. And again, I use this, not only do I use it under my arms, I use it in my inner thighs like literally guys I use uh, these two products I use them basically from my neck literally all the way to my feet but it it also it just depends on what I'm wearing for this if I'm wearing something like satin I will probably just skip this but I do use this after I shave and it really does help a lot it really does help a lot with uh with hyperpigmentation guys you might want to invest in the Dove Pink or the Dove Rose. Guys, this works amazingly. And so it's kind of one of those things when you cannot get to the shower right away if you start to sweat. What I've noticed is if I start to sweat, this is what you smell. <laughs> this is actually the smell that, started, that will come out of my pores. And so it won't be like super sweaty. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. I sweat everywhere. Like mostly on my um on my waistline I don't know why but y'all sweat really bad there and because I sweat really bad there it does cause eczema to flare up and because eczema flares up another thing that I've been using just on my waistline is just like a really really heavy heavy cream you guys can use this or you can use Joe Malone but unfortunately I I don't I don't know how to, you know, control the the sweating on my waistline. Um, and girl, don't, baby, if y'all, if any of my girlies out there got eczema, y'all know it is nothing to play with. To be honest, girls, like it gets really bad where I can't, like if it starts to flare up, like if, it, if it's hot in the middle of the day and I'm out and I'm running errands and I start to get that little that little flare up, I'll have to come home because it, it, it will itch really, really bad. And I typically won't, you know, be in a position where I can just hurry up and put some cream on it. So if you guys have any suggestions of what I can do, maybe if I have a flare up when I'm out, I would appreciate that. So yeah, girls, those are some of the things that I use. Cause you know, we, the summer is here. And you know, we wanna have beautiful skin. One last thing I wanted to tell you guys, Whatever it is that you do to your face, girls, you need to do to your neck. So like I use this toner, I use this on my face, but I also use it on my neck. Whatever moisturizer I use on my face, I use it. Oh, wait a minute. Let me back up. Whatever moisturizer I use on my face, I use it on my neck and I use it on my chest as well. This is my favorite um, moisture surge by Clinique. Guys, when I put this on my face... I actually bring it down to my neck and I bring it down to my chest. So I use it literally from here all the way up. I just wanted to share that. But anyway, guys, I know some of you girlies wanted to find out about some of the products that I use uh, to keep my skin beautiful and glowy. And these are just some of the products. Also, guys, keep in mind that I do have a very, very heavy um, vegetable based diet i do consume about four to maybe five cucumbers a day so that is also um that does also contribute to uh, my skin looking this way but anyway girls let me um get ready to take this makeup and stuff off and um get ready to jump in the shower and then i'm gonna call y'all back hey y'all i'm sorry if it's too sunny in the back but girl i am over here y'all i'm sorry i'm looking to the side but Oh my gosh. Okay, so I'm over here trying to find a camera repair. Let me clean this lens off. Oh. 
Okay. All right, I'm sorry about that. I had to clean the lens. So anyway, I'm over here trying to find a camera repair shop. I'm gonna be honest. I'm really just thinking about um, just buying another camera. Um, I, I'm pretty sure I checked in last night. Uh, I don't know, y'all. This has just thrown me completely off of my game. Because I text one person, they said that they could fix the camera. It would be like 119 plus parts or whatever. Um, I found a refurbished camera on, uh, what's that? Amazon. So what I'm going to do is, hold on. I'm going to look up a Shurion. And, well, I'm going to see, like, I know now that I'm going to have to get insurance on my devices. So, anyway, um, that's what I'm doing now. I was cleaning up a little bit. Um, the good news is the camera still works, but it's just distracting. You know what I'm saying? When you have a damn viewfinder girl that's literally just hanging on you know, by a wire because that's what it's hanging on by. So it's just one of those things where you just want the stuff, you just want your stuff to look right. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit distracted right now. Let me try to figure this thing out and I'm gonna call y'all back. Okay, coming to you live from my iPhone. We got the Fine Daddy exclusive, y'all. Y'all look, I'm trying to sneak in, like peel my curtains back real, real slow. But y'all look, look at this fine black daddy right here. Why am I whispering, bitch? She can't hear me, but y'all look. Ooh, I'm finna zoom in on them because I know y'all can't see them. Y'all look, girl. Y'all, we might go get in the pool today. Hold on. Damn, that's too much. Hold on. Can y'all see him? Ooh, y'all yeah. can't even see him that good. I want to do it from the camera, but girl, y'all already know what's going on with that. Oh, y'all can kind of see them a little bit. Y'all got the grid marks. Y'all, why is the screen looking like the front of my wig right now? <laughs> and then look, y'all, we got another fine daddy laying directly under our window, baby. Yes, sir. And then look over here, baby, it's International Pool Day. We got another fine daddy over here. The Colombian fine daddy is on the grill. He's on the wheels of steel, baby, on the grill over there, making some pet sugar. Can y'all, wait a minute, girl. Can y'all see him? Hold on. Y'all can't see him that good. Baby, your boy is over there making some cilantro pechuga and some el, el carbon and corn. So we got the camera situated. Uh, so I use my sister's discount. So we have a camera. It's still going to be white. It's like new. So I paid exactly $500 for it. And I put it on Clarina because you guys know how I feel about Clarina. So to all of my girlies out there that's looking to get into getting into vlogging, if you started vlogging, you don't have a camera, girl, just go on Amazon and type in Sony ZV-1. But when you type in Sony ZV-1, look up um, uh, from other sellers. Just look up under there. And guys, they have cameras as low as $409 all the way up so that's what i did we're also going to see if we can still get this camera repaired that way we'll just have a backup camera in, in the event that something ever happens again so that's the route that i chose to take but anyway girl i'm trying to clean up this bathroom but girl y'all let me tell y'all real quick girl so baby uh y'all know like this the youtube algorithm is real girl so y'all know in the last vlog we was talking about doing some sex and stuff Girl, why a sex company gonna contact me with some sex toys? Girl, they want me to do some sex with some of their sex toys and then get on the thing and tell the people how if the sex was good with the sex toys. Ma'am, I'm not, <laughs> bitch, I'm not doing that. Alrighty. All right, y'all, so we just finished the bathroom and I am getting this hallway thing together but let me tell y'all girl y'all remember the dude that scammed us out of that money at the mall charged me basically 180 dollars for two of these this little bullshit ass perfume so you know i made a claim with wells fargo right so initially they put the claim in and i guess after they did their investigation they reversed the claim but i was like you know 
karma you know karma is real and i was like that dude he's probably still out here scamming people but that's okay when karma catch up with his ass it's gonna be all bad so yeah um so every time i in fact i just and y'all this is literally toilet water i mean y'all this don't have no kind of like smell or anything to it it is just it's just a basically a bottle of fucking water i get pissed off every single time i think about how he messed over me i really really do but the good news is i believe within everything in my being that i will get the money back i will get the money back more than 10 times fold i'm speaking this into existence now i'm gonna get the money back a hundred times fold um well i'm probably gonna use maybe three for this shepherd's pride tonight oh i am finally finished with the cleaning let me adjust this camera baby it's i'm always I'm always asking y'all to let me do something. But anyway, so y'all, while I was cleaning up, I actually started watching this video that Rashid from Ready to Love made. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the show on uh, BET or OWN. It's called Ready to Love, and that's basically where contestants go on a show, single contestants go on the show, and uh, basically they are looking to get matched up with other singles. He ended up meeting another lady on the show. Her name was Simone um anyway him and simone got together simone is an attorney and he was uh basically like a big time car salesman they live here in houston long story short he made a video basically confessing that he never had it like that like he was never uh he was very good at being manipulative and he also admitted that he was a narcissist and um so he did uh finally tell simone his truth uh regarding you know, like he just didn't have it like that. They was pushing the wedding back and stuff, girl. So anyway, Simone just got to the point where, you know, she was she was over it. Because initially, they were supposed to have this big wedding. That got pushed back. Then they were supposed to have a destination wedding. That got pushed back because he just couldn't come up with the money. So anyway, it is just a cautionary tale. And he was like, he he just cared about what people thought about him. And that's why he, you know live this life his first marriage ended because of financial fidelity and he was explaining that he's never committed fidelity in the sense of going and dating other women but he's committed financial infidelity and infidelity not only did he admit that he also admitted that his rolex as well as his chain his chain all of that stuff was fake was fake excuse me and then he was saying that he no longer cares about what people think about him but it was just the fact of like literally it took him losing the love the the woman that he loved which was simone um for him to come clean but i'm just i'm not convinced that he'll be able to change like completely immediately you know it takes a while and then i just wanted to also speak to you know when you start telling the universe that you do not care and i learned this from oprah winfrey on one episode of oprah winfrey uh uh What's her name? Jessica Simpson was on that episode. Jessica Simpson was talking about how people were calling her fat and just making fun of her weight at the time. And she told Oprah Winfrey that she did not care anymore. And I remember Oprah Winfrey saying, be careful what you tell the universe in regards to you not caring. Because the minute you tell the universe that you do not care, the universe is going to give you more of what you say you don't care about to see if you really don't care. And I remember Jessica Simpson, I, I want to say Jessica Simpson retracted or redacted, whatever word you want to use, her statement. And then she, uh, I think she just said that she didn't like it instead of saying that she didn't care. And so, you know, you really do have to be careful about what you tell the universe you don't care about because he is now saying that he does not care about what people think about him, guys. This guy, he said he has to sell his house. He has to get rid of cars that he cannot afford. And he was saying he's the car guy. He's Rashid the Great. He's the car salesman. And he can't pull up to the function. And he can't pull up to the thing and just any old car. You know, and so he has to keep this persona going. And as a result of him keeping it going, it's just led to his demise. And so I just wanted to come on and talk to you guys about that. And just, you know, being careful about your words and being careful about, you know, trying to get trapped up and caught up into these this lifestyle that you have to keep up with. You know, there are people who will accept you for who you are, despite what you have. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times, guys... 
your very personality will carry you through life. You don't have to have all of the things, honey. You know, you don't need the fancy car. You don't need the fancy bags, guys. Look at me. I don't have all of that fancy stuff, and nor do I care to have those things. I lost everything I had, but everything I had was not... It wasn't anything that I would say was highly materialistic. I think the most valuable thing I lost was a black wedding, a custom black wedding dress. And guys, that dress probably cost less than $100 for me and my mom to make. And so, you know, you don't want to get caught up in this super materialistic life and life where you want to, you got to keep up with the Joneses and you got to keep up this facade. It is just simply not worth it. And it's not, it's not as stressful. You know, and I think that it, it does feel good to be able to just in my personal life as, and as and as well as being able to come on YouTube and, OK, I got this from the thrift store. I got this from, you know, uh, Dee Dee's or Big Lots or, you know, wherever it feels good because it just further proves that people will accept you no matter what, because that the bottom line is it is about your spirit. It is about the energy you put out and it is more importantly, it is about how you make people feel. You know, if you uplift people, you inspire people, you encourage people, they don't give a damn what you have. You know what I'm saying? The most valuable things I have guys are just my life lessons that I share with you guys and how I inspire you and how I teach y'all how to navigate through corporate America. You know, how I teach you guys, you know, how to save money, how to finish your wardrobe. Those are the most valuable things that I have. You know what I'm saying? And so it is my uh, intellectual property as well as my creative agency that I value up over and above any materialistic item there is to value. So anyway, I just wanted to come and talk to you guys about that. I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog here because guys, it is um it's 6:58, so I need to get this vlog edited and uh you know, these companies they're going to start emailing me. You know, the companies that I work with, they're about to start emailing me and I'm going to have to, you know, probably go into negotiations a little bit later on tonight. Um and so that's basically it. But anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and close it out here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And uh, I'm going to see you in the next one. Rosa, Rosa, Rosa.